This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another After Hours edition of Strange Love. I'm your host, Kimmy Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. 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 Cram Namlock, Mark Coleman, up in here to put the live back in Strange Love Live. I'm here with the former host, Miss Camellia Chaos, and her able sidekick, the so-called Dr. Normal. I, Yo. I, I guess Yo. Strange Love Live is being taken over this evening. For reals, you better believe it, baby. How you doing, Cram? I'm doing fine. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't know you were coming tonight. Well, you know, my bitches was rolling by, and I just thought I'd pop in here for a second and maybe throw back a little beer and say hello. Hello? Hello. So what do you want to talk about? Well, let's talk about photography. Mm Mm-hmm. Photographs. Yeah, for real. Well, what do you normally do on your show? Well, normally we have uh, people send in their pictures to be critiqued. And we just do all kind of crazy stuff. Try to raise y'all folks from being guax to being mold in that. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. Well, you know, conveniently, I happen to have, tucked behind my chair, a photograph that was taken by a supposed professional photographer. Woo! I just realized this is going to sound great on the iPods. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't really know oh my God. that I would call this a professional photo because... Be careful, don't mention any names. <laughs> like little, large uh-oh. companies that can sue us. Uh-oh. I'm a little terrified, but I'll let you take a look at it, Crab, and tell me what you think. Okay, it's a good thing I got my glasses <laughs> on here. <laughs> All right, these are a couple young people who look like they stoned on some kind of <laughs> illegal substance. <laughs> hmm. Can y'all see this picture? This was oh, taken at Lord. Sears Roebuck, I can oh, tell. No. And they had the diffusion filter on, which made them look almost like they wasn't stoned. <laughs> <laughs> I want this for my home. You can have a copy. <laughs> I believe we have an even larger one upstairs. When they were young. And Cami Chaos was blonde and had long hair. Wow. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. crazy, crazy. Totally crazy. Cami Chaos, do you have any more? Cami Chaos hates that picture. I hate it. Okay, we're going to hide it. I hate, hide it. I hate it. Make it go away. And can I ask Cami Chaos whose idea it was to take that picture? <laughs> <clears throat> the two-year-olds. Okay, right. Oh. She's two. Okay. Wow. Okay, so now we have, these are, these are the Chaos family, Precious Family Fortress. This was taken by Nana Chaos. Okay. He was not present. Nana Chaos. And I like this frame. Thank okay. You. I like that. That's very cool. And you know, the cool thing about this, y'all, is you can walk around the streets of Portland with this around <laughs> Yo, your yo, yo. Yo, what up, y'all? My pitch is $50. How about it? <laughs> I like it. It's black and white. It's, uh, it's got some feeling and emotion to it. It's cool. It's, it's got spontaneous. Some emotion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the train, Washington Park train, right? Uh-huh. The Z train. You probably can't see it. We're going to have to scan yeah. it for later. I'll yeah. have to put them up. Okay. okay. Image number two. We're, we're willing to accept critiques as well. Okay. Here we go. Okay. This was taken by Cami Chaos. Ah. This is way cool. You're I love this one. You're looking at it upside down. Though. Okay. It's yeah. upside, this is the way it goes. No, no. All right. No, this way. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. okay, first critique. Okay. Put an arrow. We, says, you know what? If you can't tell which way the photo goes, there's no some problem. That's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, if you can't tell which way the photo goes, it don't mean it's bad. I think it's very interesting. <laughs> it's uh, it's another one that technically is not, maybe not correct, but it's got feeling. And it's so cute. The little girl's looking up while her, her nana is making some uh, marijuana brownies. <laughs> it's very nice. I can't believe not only did he identify the correct name for Nana Chaos, <laughs> but, it was the but also what brownies. we were making. <laughs> so... Uh, you have more? Image number three was taken by ah. the, a third member of the Chaos family, Dr. Normal, who who dropped my name when he married me. The so-called Dr. Normal. Before I critique this, I want to tell you all at home, you know, he calls himself Dr. Normal. He's over there. He got on one of them dog collars with spikes. He got on some oh, kind yeah. of Nazi officer hat, and then he got them <laughs> leather chaps with his butt cheeks hanging out. He's not normal. Viva la He's butt far cheeks. from it. 
This is why I'm not on camera. And that photo was taken like in the previous studio. The this, studio in our previous home. This is the way she was, folks. I the like it. It's it's got emotion too. It's a, you know it's got some blurriness going on, but uh, <laughs> we're all about the blurry. It's a sexy chick with you know that word that that this woman right here, sweet tits. I, she said it, not me. It's well, nice, and well, I like the tats. It's always yeah, it's always a little blurry because you know we're always drunk when we. I, yeah, I feel like we're exploiting Cram photography. So speaking of tats, so let let me share oh, some geez. photos with you, and and the way I like to do them is I like to cut them out. Actually, <laughs> that's just they my have a special tool for thing. that in Photoshop. <laughs> exactly. You know? So this this he I, has a tool. He calls them scissors. <laughs> All right, now we're talking. Now is this a booty or what? <laughs> this is a booty. She was wanting to see it. There's the booty. Don, you can't look. That's another man's wife's booty. It's beautiful. She was blonde then. I like it. <laughs> that was a wig. Mm-hmm. Bootylicious. Yeah. This, this is, is good. Uh, I'm taking this one home with me. Yeah, this one, I think I got a little too excited in the cutter there. <laughs> oh, my God. He done cut a booty, y'all. Look at this. Mm, mm, mm. What does that say? All right. I like it. Here and we these go. These aren't too blurry, uh, Cram. <laughs> That photo looks like it belongs on a beer okay, bottle. That I was say. blurry because the man was a little nervous. He was shaking. He's thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to do next? Beautiful. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> They're going to have to burn this tape later. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh here's a copy here. You can, you can keep one of these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll put this on my next it's show. Kinda like, okay. It's kind of like All the right, burger have, joint. You get a like, one uh, of these with the burger. We can animate these. <laughs> we can have them dance around. I feel like I need to be on a popsicle stick. This is good. I like it. All right. So th- this is oh, some dear. of my my uh, personal <laughs> work. <laughs> I don't know. This one's kind of cut off. I think we'll just put that. Okay, there. we're gonna put that way. Yeah. I think All right. We're gonna... Now listen, y'all. I got one little thing I want to do. Now we're gonna play a little game. We're gonna talk about underwear. So, girl, you know you're multi-talented. I will find a way for you to make some money, some real money. Now, don't <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you $5 if you can tell me what color chones this man is wearing right now. Oh. His underwear right now. $5. I'm going to guess. Everybody in the chat room, come on, you can guess. I'll give I'm you $5 guess dollars later. Oh, usually see. Did you do this on every episode of I've your show? I've never done this before. Oh, okay. Y'all made me freaky. Usually yeah. I pay attention to what's underneath the underwear. Is it the sassy nice. pictures of my wife? <laughs> or <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> They're not going to do it. Come on, what color? Oh, you want me to guess? Yeah. Blue. Can I just tell you, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm I just going to say. I'm not going to guess because if I'm right, I'll never live it down. <laughs> it was I'm early in the morning. Say, I don't know. There was some incriminating happenings earlier, and I don't remember what color the underwear was during the incriminating happenings. Yeah, I, I don't. We're I, never going to know. He's not going to look. I, I, I want to know what color the underwear I want to know. I'm saying blue. <laughs> Anyone else have a guess? You can always go with brown and be close, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, Don. Don has to guess. Don. Come on. Stripes. See, Don don't like. He's to probably think like right because he's got a great pair of Never stripes. Never think of another man's underwear. All right. No, no, no. Wait. Never. Come on, Doctor Normal. Let's we, see we what you to, got. We have to say that Don is. Uh, Excuse me. Don tonight is in in our studio audience shirt cocking. He is shirt he cocking. Is. So and he doesn't I won't have say any what media on. chick's doing. She does have something on her. Her laptop says, expose your treasures. I That's ain't right. Lying. That's right. It's real. Wait, you don't have to come over here. For <laughs> yeah. she's, she's going, Can oh my God. Don't look, kind of y'all <laughs> at home. She's taking his drawers down live on Ladies and gentlemen, camera. welcome to the Howard Stern <laughs> Show. I need to know what kind of underwear. I need to know. See what, what people will do for $5? Yeah, color, color, color. You can have lots of fun. <laughs> it's blue. All right, girl. Wait, I didn't see him. <laughs> no, I don't want to see him. Okay, here we go. I got to go. I got my bitches waiting in the limo. It's oh, been nice seeing Graham. y'all. Yeah. Oh, hey, everybody, give it up for Cram Namlock. He was in the house. Cram Namlock Woo! in the house. We are so blessed, ladies and gentlemen. That was, that was really, really nice. I just, you know, I'm kind of worried about Mark, though. I'm wondering if Cram shoved him in a closet or something. I don't know. Hey, we... hey, media chick, do you want to go look for Mark for us? And while you're looking yeah. for Mark... <laughs> Oh, there he is. Hey, hey. Hey, Mark. How are you? Who is that crazy freak? I don't know. He's just kind of, you know, I didn't know he was coming, but. It's bright in here. Is, is it just. <laughs> is it just... <laughs> 
So did we just like work for a half an hour on that bit or what? I mean, <laughs> that, was like, that was the most. Yeah. <laughs> that was the most preparation we've ever done. We're on Hollywood Strange now. Love Life. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We have a, a chat room to please, I guess. You yeah. Know? <clears throat> Strange of Life you just actually suck. worked for your pleasure. And, and Cram didn't take the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the you, can someone we, please move the pictures you, of you, my ass? You guys are wild. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, you took the one of my ass cut in e- half. eBay, eBay. Dude, <laughs> we'll I look wanna, later. I see that one though, because like I really, I mean, what happened here? What kind of a man I, I would know. do that to his own? Dude, like I said, wife. my ass is cut think, in half. I think the, I think the, um, the, uh, the, the, the scissors. Slipped. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, exactly. My, Thank you. My um, poor that's what ass. I always Dude, say too. I'm looking down here and I'm like, <laughs> I'm examining know. this photo for the first time since it was taken. It and was like one of those art projects, you know. And with yeah, the, with I seem to recall. I everything. seem to recall putting this image on the front of of a card for your friend's 40th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You guys are cool. <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, I liked you before, but I really like you now. <laughs> Oh my word! Oh jeez! Oh, so um, the house of chaos. Yes. So, <laughs> so that's it. Thank you for <laughs> strange it. love. We've done hours. it, right? Yay. <laughs> okay. So no, in all seriousness, we are joined in studio tonight not only by myself and Doctor Normal and Mark Coleman, but also by Media Chick and Don P. Don P. Yay! <clears throat> Don P. will not be allowed to sing this evening, and neither will I, unless it's someone's birthday. You know. You never know. It's a good thing. I banned happen. them from singing. Yeah, I happen. think if I anyone's think... going to sing, it's going to be me. Yeah, weren't you it. the guy who checked out? You were just like, the I did. singing started, yeah. and I, I'm out of here. I gave you five seconds. But I know. I Phil watched, Collins. And, uh, I read the countdown, and I almost laughed myself silly. Yeah, wow. I didn't leave. Wow. Good wow. stuff. I'm, if you're going to go with Phil Collins or Peter Gabriel, I'm in Peter Gabriel camp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you think of Peter Zatera? Oh, I know. It's I completely know. unrelated. I don't but even know who that is. Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Chicago. I'm a little I horrified. thought Chicago were a were pretty good band. Mm. I mean, well, all Peter's the horns. The high voice yeah. in Chicago. You remember? The, yeah. You, yeah. You know. They were okay. I wasn't, they were a little too straight for me. I love Peter that era. Yeah. I have a great, yeah, they were great a love too of normal. Peter Cetera. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh, more like a, a Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Guy, yeah. Right? I like yeah. him a little better. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. If I had to Tower pick one power. of the two. Yeah. That's true. Old Sly and the Family Stone, even better. Sly and the Family Stone. Sly and the Family Stone. So, what are we drinking tonight? I think we should cue up the. Okay. The drink music, right? Hopefully. Oh yes, there it is. So what are we drinking? I'm sorry, I'm dancing with the. <laughs> okay. Can, I'll tell can you, you grab I'm one drinking. of your girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we finally have dancing girls in the exactly. show. Exactly. I'm so drinking warthog me. ale. Yeah. And that's, like that's that. good. That's working out for you. Huh? I love it. Good, good. And um, earlier I was drinking a dirty dry gin martini. Now I'm drinking gin and limeade. Right. Media Chick is also drinking gin and limeade. And Don is drinking prune juice. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's some like. Please don't make a mess while you're shirt cocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, could you like maybe put a piece of paper <laughs> on the chair before you sit down? <laughs> oh Lord, <laughs> Howard Stern, you have nothing on us. Um, and I am drinking a dirty dry martini. No, you're just drinking a dry martini with three olives. Oh, okay, dirty. That's cool. I swing I, both ways. I was out. Of, <laughs> I was out yeah. of dirty juice. Dirty or or dry or both. You know. All right. Okay. Yes. So now it's now after we, hours. Now that we've blown all our good material. <laughs> yeah. Now, now we've got like thirty five minutes to go. Now. Yeah. It's like, what you got, Mark? Come on. Help us well, out. No few jokes. Yeah, just or? ask him if he, if he sleeps with all those models. That's what generally yes. people ask me. There Do we go. Do you sleep with all your models? No, only as many as will let me. Oh, no, man. I really don't. I I do sleep with some of them, but usually it's like for periods of five years. I'm kind of a serial really? monogamist. Yeah. No, but, serial model monogamist. So seriously, you've actually had relationships with Well, a you few know, of your models. that's that's my, the business I'm in. It. It's like that's who I meet, you yeah. know. It's not like I think, "Oh, well, I have to be with a model." It's like that's who right. I work with all the time and you know, living in Los Angeles, those are the people I met and uh yeah, I well. mean, I, I had some relationships with a few models, but it wasn't like, you know, one night stands and then another one in the next night. Yeah. It's more, yeah. you know. Yeah. It was love, baby. So 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 when so when, you know, that kid in the dark room when I was in school when I was a kid and everybody ridiculed him. The kid in the dark he's room. He's the guy <laughs> who's like got the five year relationship with the hot New York model now, you know. Yeah. Right? yeah. Exactly. Nice. I mean, I've, nice. I've I've known many 
uh, knockout models to be with like totally geeky looking guys that you would never think in a yeah, million years. Like yeah. uh, Paulina and uh, what's the guy, uh, Rick Ocasek in the car. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, they've, been, yeah. they've been together oh, for yeah. over 20 years. It's insane. Oh, man. I remember when so, she came out in Sports Illustrated and yeah. stuff. And like every, I mean, at that time, everybody was like, oh, well, you know what I liked about her? And she was in the video, too. Yeah. Right? When she came from. Poland or wherever she's from, she got off the the plane wearing a, a t-shirt. Isn't she Czech or Maybe. Polish? Maybe I'm not sure, Czech. but when she came off the plane in America, she was wearing a shirt that said "Too Drunk to Fuck." You know the Dead Kennedy Seriously? song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> I so love the Dead. She's Kennedy. cool. I do too. But they're not a couple anymore. I think. Really? Did they break up? No, I don't think they broke up. I think up. they're still together. I think they're still. No, together. I, think, I think you're smoking crack. I think they died. What? Would you stop killing people? Because <laughs> wasn't Rick Ocasek recently on like the Colbert show? I swear they broke up. They're still up. together. See, now I'm, doing it. Beat now I'm doing it with relationships. First I do it with dead people. It's like, oh no, he's dead. No, no. Yeah. Right. And now I'm doing it with relationships. So I have a question from the studio, or from not the studio, from the chat room. <laughs> yes. La, 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 la. <laughs> it's after hours. I can have a drink. Yeah, and it's going to be after morning at 7 in the morning when you're at WordCamp. Yeah, this way. might be a brief edition of after hours. <laughs> I have to wake up at like 5.30, people. 5.30 in the morning. Do you wake morning. up early, Mark? Just stay up all night. No, I don't. I'm a, I, I try yeah, to artist, avoid that. Artist. Yeah. 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 But oh. I have to tomorrow. I don't yeah. like this. I have to ride my bike for like six miles at seven in the morning. Yeah, what's up? Thanks, with that? Hockley. Yeah, what's up with that? Damn it, Creative Hockley. stuff needs to start at noon on weekends. And then we can Hockley. go to midnight. It's I cool. Thought, I mean, I mean, I thought. Oh, that would be nice. I would go for that. Yeah. Noon to midnight. Yeah, exactly. Something to think about, Cyborg Camp. There I we thought, go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um,. <laughs> <laughs> Did we even Sorry. get to the question? Yeah. Oh well, no, I have a question. <laughs> Zen librarian oh, we would never like get to, to know the question. if you could give a beginner one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, now wait a minute, is this a photography I a, question I, I have a piece or of a advice. sleeping ooh, with ooh. models question? No, no, I have a piece of advice for the beginner. If I could give a beginner photographer one piece of advice, it would be to watch the Cram Namlock show on yes. Blip TV. Thank you, and yes, it's entertaining. Please. That's what people you tell. I've actually made it through every some... single episode and really? learned stuff. Wow, cool. That's what people tell me. I laughed my ass off and I learned something. Mm-hmm, so that's mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, that's important. Wa- watch Mark Coleman at Blip TV and she knows the link, but I don't. But no, I, I think uh, <laughs> what I realized lately is that people, a lot of people don't pay attention to composition, which is the most basic thing, whether you're, whatever camera you're using, pay attention to how you frame things, you know, and I'm going to, my next episode is going to be on composition. I've got some great submissions from a bunch of guys on a site called Nelson Photo with an F. Dot com. So uh, that and, uh, you know, if you're the type of person that uh, likes to go on crazy adventures, apply that with your work, you know, like, um, you know, like Robert Crumb, when he was young, he did acid and it changed his his mm-hmm. work totally. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm not saying all you people out there <laughs> do LSD 25, <laughs> but if you're an adventurous person, try to be adventurous with your photography. And if, if you're not, try to be adventurous so because uh, as, a, as a person who... The Strange Love Live After Hours crew recommends a dirty dry martini <laughs> over acid. Yes, a, a four way hit of LSD 25. <laughs> we prefer no. gin. <laughs> We're real Jack Webb enthusiasts here, as you'll see next week when Gary Walter will join us. <laughs> now, Cram Namlock, yes. not so much. No. So, no, I, I actually have a valid, I have a valid question. Ooh. Yes. So, as a person who does not do the best job framing her photos. Yes. Really? You're a pretty good photographer. I'm a. I'm a. I gotta say I, it the right way. I'm a guac. I really am. And a I guac? try. A guac. Yes. Am I say? Yeah. A guy. Oh, yeah. Or mm-hmm. a girl with a camera who they oftentimes yeah, yeah. think they're photographers, but they're really not. Yeah. yeah. Someone who owns a camera. I do my best and I love my camera, but oftentimes I'm just trying to get things done quickly so I don't think about the framing because I have the mentality of. I have Photoshop. I love Photoshop, <laughs> and I go into Photoshop and then and then crop shit. Right, right. Um, so, what do you think of? I mean, you know, when you have that option available to you, do you think that's an overused? Well, it kind of is. It's, it's kind of a sloppy way of working, though. If you if you have any kind of artistic sense, you want to create something that. Almost the minute you press the shutter, it's nice if you can make something that's almost finished, mm-hmm. that doesn't have to be fixed, that's not broken, that mm-hmm. it's it's there, <laughs> you know? It's just right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can fix anything in Photoshop for the most part, but if you get used to doing compositional things, it will affect your work in ways you don't suspect. 
See, I think that I look at photography as a writer. Meaning you edit a lot later? Correct. You write yeah. it out and you have to get it all out. I mean, it's there and you have to get it all out all at once. Because mm-hmm. right. otherwise it might go away. Right. And I think I do the photography the very the same way. I'm like, oh, open it up really big. Right. Get everything. And that way when I go back later, I can decide what I really wanted and what I didn't. Right. But if you're trying to go beyond uh, like craft to art, it's mm-hmm. really important like... When you create something, like there's lighting, for instance, you can create it in a way where you shoot it from a certain way where the light's right, mm-hmm. and maybe you're in a hurry and you don't want to do that. You can't really fix the lighting no, later, even in Photoshop. Point. So and it's, it's different. Problem. Yeah. It's you different than passing writing. passing notes to me. I feel oh, like boy, I'm in school. Oh, boy, more questions. Oh, where is the best place in Portland to buy film is the question we have. Ah, well, I, I hate to admit this, but I don't buy my film in Portland. <laughs> I buy it where it's cheapest. But uh, <laughs> I love this place called Blue Moon Camera and Machine, and I really want a Rolly Flex from you guys for doing this. But Give him stuff. They have stuff. a lot of old cameras. They have digital cameras. They develop all kinds of film. They're really cool. If you don't know anything about film photography, you've never tried it, you want to try it, go in there and talk to those guys because they develop it. They'll make prints for you. They'll teach you how to... Uh, <laughs> teach you how to people are licking photographs over there i think media chick wants to take some naked pictures of me home i uh, there. i uh, kind of cleared the the, okay. the set here and, and and <laughs> got don and, and media chick to kind of fixate on camera yeah. cheesecake photos so yeah, there we go <laughs> so it they're works. real quiet now. yeah they are <laughs> they won't be answering any more questions from the chat room. i can pass them the the sears photo <laughs> yeah <laughs> later there you go that'll that'll <laughs> that, wake them up yeah that'll put like up. a cold shower exactly right? exactly so i, I um okay. on the i have film another thing. no i have another question it's <sighs> still related to the film thing and that was doug coleman by the way that asked and Brooke and coleman. he also would like to know uh any film secrets any film secrets. secrets? Well, if if you're doing black and white, if you can learn to develop your own film, it's really simple. It's the hardest thing is loading the film on a reel, but you have a lot of control with the kind of developers you can use, mm-hmm. and uh, you know you can have control with filters and things. But that I would use if you're, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do really saturated color photos, there's a film called Fuji Chrome Velvia that's very good. Velvia. Uh, Velvia. Yeah, it's not like cheese. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, develop your own film. Velvet is not like cheese Fuji, either. Fujichrome. Hmm. Yes, Fujichrome. It's transparency film, so you've got to get your exposure right on. If you're a little yeah. bit off, you're screwed. Like a slide. slide yeah, film. it's slide film, basically. So I was yeah. when I was a kid and got into photography. Yeah. Like you do. I have a question about um, kids in photography, actually. But I, I really, I really ended up with the whole Kodachrome. Right. Oh, si- actually, 64 the was yeah. the one that I like, because 25 was... Too a little slow too slow. You. Yeah. And they'd come out with 64 and it still had a lot of really good oh, color. Oh, yeah. I shot that really... film for ages. Yeah. So all my slides from Europe, from right. Washington, D.C., we talked about earlier yeah. and stuff, are all Kodachrome 64 shots. Right. That's a wonderful mm-hmm. film. Unfortunately, they're, it's almost gone now and there's only one place left in America that processes it. Well, it was it. still a pain in the butt to do it because you'd have to send it away right. to get processed. Yeah. By Kodak. Yeah, it's a special process called K14. And they, yeah. uh, yep. back when I was in L.A. in the 90s, there was a big lab there that bought the machine. And it was like $500,000 machine. Oh, my and God. And then like a year later, Kodak decided to start discontinuing some of the film. And, of course, there was yeah. a lawsuit. But uh, Kodachrome is one of the best films ever made. If I had to pick a single film, color film, it would be Kodachrome. Really? Really? Yeah, especially the 25 early miss because it's just unbelievable, the color saturation and no yeah. grain. Yeah. Well, I, when I, when I shot it, I remember. I mean, I tried Fuji. I think I tried. Right. Was it Ag? Uh, Agfa. The, Agfa. Yeah. Right. And uh, and of course, Ektachrome. Sure. They had, yeah. And they were all like kind of on the blue green side. Yeah. It's and true. Kodachrome was always like rich and right, much warmer, a lot more red and pinks. Is that correct? I it's mean, it's, totally true. Yeah. Or am I just over here smoking crack like I do? No, absolutely. I mean, I used to not shoot ectochrome because it would be blue or green yeah. almost all the time. You'd have to filter it out. And you know, what professionals would do a lot of times is they buy like a brick of it or a case of it and yeah. then you test it and then you put filters on your lens in the days before Photoshop to mm-hmm. compensate for the, the color problem. But uh, no, Kodachrome is way better. 18 years old. I was in Paris, France. So like I'd go to like Berlin, Paris and all these places and I'd make my dad go out with me at night with the tripod. Oh cool. And everything. Great. And you know put stuff on the timer. Yeah. I'm in Paris, France. I ran out of my last roll <laughs> of Kodachrome 64. Yeah. And so I've got this shitty Ektachrome like 100 <laughs> or something or right. whatever. 
and so I'm sh- trying to shoot the Eiffel Tower and all this at night. Yeah. Now I've all got the whole Kodachrome 64 timings all down for night shots. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you got to recalculate everything, right? And, Totally messed up. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally. Sure. So, so my, you know, got really great shots of Berlin at night. Got right shots of London, some other Paris. Yeah, eh, not so much. Real kind of right. You know, you know, overexposed and stuff. You know, Eiffel Tower at sure. night. Sure. Yeah. Crap. The only time I ever shot ectochrome on a long term basis is when I moved to um, Milan, Italy, and for some reason, um, their chemistry over there yeah. is supposed to be the same, but ectochrome looked better than. Uh, Anything else better than Fuji when I was? Oh, there's someone there, so. in the chat room who's a who's an Ectochrome fan. Yeah, well, it's a good film, you know. But yeah. uh, in the early days, it did tend to go blue and green for people who like to shoot people, and people don't look yeah. good in blue and green. Yeah, that's speaking. that's what I thought. I'd... But it's better now. Yeah. Okay, I have a non-film related question, but I have a friend. Yes. I know it's hard to believe, but I have a friend <laughs> who has a four-year-old son, and uh, he's a, he's train obsessed little. Crazy man, obsessed with trains and women. Okay, at four years old. Oh yes. What a kid. He is. A he sounds like he's he's on his way. <laughs> he's trains an and awesome women. little dude. He loves trains. He loves women. Yeah. So <laughs> so he's straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know that. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Let's say <laughs> this. German that <laughs> this boy seems to like legs a lot, and so oh, I like trains going in tunnels a lot, right? <laughs> yes, he does. So a few weeks ago, they're at a department store. She's bra shopping. Okay. They're in the lingerie department, and he comes across what at the time she thought was a magazine. Um, women dressed in various stages of dressed and undress, large boots, kind of thing that Dr. Norman would appreciate, <laughs> trains in the background, roller coasters in the background. And basically, she said women, and then she eventually got a hold of this. It was a catalog, and it was a catalog that was shot to look like high fashion photography. Yeah. Uh, basically, fourteen-year-old girls okay. dressed in you know twenty-eight hundred-dollar boots, like Vogue magazine. Yeah, but but not Vogue magazine for a department store. Okay. And I was wondering if there was a point for you that you saw like photography and that you were like, uh, because now I'm convinced that there's no way this little boy is going to be able to find these women in reality. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Are you asking a sexual orientation question or a photography question? No, I'm. <laughs> Yes, I am. I'm asking. I'm saying. I. I think. I. And I adore this little guy. He's such a little sweet pea. Yeah. And I'm. Th- I'm looking at the images because she, she brought it to me to look at because there was a pair of sixteen hundred dollars snakeskin boots that she thought I might like. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so I'm looking at this catalog and I'm thinking this poor this poor boy is going to have an unrealistic expectation of yes. of beauty. And of women having trains behind them all the time. I mean, <laughs> he's obsessed with trains, and now he so? thinks that, that like sexy, hot, fifteen-year-old women. Hey, right. I held out for you. I mean, I was watching like the Avengers and shit, Good and job. Mrs. Emma Peel in high boots, and I was like, I want a dark-haired girl in boots like that. Right? Good job, Doctor Normal. Good they didn't job. have tattoos back in the '60s, but it's all good, right? Yeah, right. So no, I'm I'm wondering if there was a moment for you. Did you see there was there photography still as a child? Was there something that made you lean towards photography, um, or what you think of that unrealistic expectation of perfection? Well. Um, it's really different in this country than it is in Europe. In mm-hmm. Europe, they, you know, like uh, a lot of times in magazines, the editorial pictures will be of women that don't have their wrinkles retouched, you know, mm-hmm. like Isabella Rossellini, you know. She's beautiful. She man. was one of the first models that, you know, did her own makeup line and her photos weren't retouched. And so you'd be in, you know, Beverly Hills in some boutique or something. You'd so, see all these big photos of all these, you know, supermodels all retouching there. She'd be and she had her wrinkles. So, so, so wait a minute. That's an interesting ob- observation. So yeah. really in Europe, because people are maybe more comfortable with the body being displayed. Right. Publicly, They're comfortable with right? who we really are as human beings. That's and interesting. We get, we I've get never older, thought about that. And you know what? We're still beautiful. Yeah. I've never thought about that because, yeah. I mean, here, if, if it's, you know, I mean, well, I mean, we, you know, Nudity this country was born on Playboy, States, right? Unless you're yeah, hot. It's like, exactly. get that girl there, right. retouch, it's true. Yeah. you know, pull out the blemishes and everything, retouch everything. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, that is the American way, right? Totally. I mean, we sell Barbies and totally stuff. Totally But fake. if you go to Europe, wow, I've never thought about that. That's actually yeah. really... It's much more yeah. healthy. 
you know? Oh, yeah. You so, think? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's strange that, that we're so locked into that here. Well, we're Puritans, right? Yeah, So exactly. if somebody's getting naked, it better be painted and, and spackled. Right. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Really, it's only okay to be naked in America if you're young and hot. On film, really. I mean, if they yeah. let you be naked for, yeah, I, I don't know, exactly. Yeah. But in Europe, it's like people are naked, right? You know, yeah. I it, mean, you might uh, ask somebody to put that away once in a while, but you know, <laughs> hey, you know it's all dude, shirt cocking is yeah. not okay inside a restaurant. Could you just pull your pants up? Yeah, really. There'd be a lot of that in uh, um, Burning Man, uh, Berlin, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Don P is waving my ass at me. Yes. <laughs> He's over there making scans for later. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How often do I get to say that someone's waving my ass at me? Yeah, really. It's fantastic. It's a, uh, Actually, they just tuned in. It's like, okay. It's a, um, you know, a, a Strange Love exclusive tonight. Yeah, no doubt. That's right. I like it. So, what else? I mean, would, so here we are, Strange Love Live. Being yes, here, we are. Hanging out. Um, it's good. It's good. I'm, we're really happy to have you here. Thank you. It's good to be here. What, what shall we talk about? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I have a now question. It's your turn. Yes. I was walking down the street on my way home from dropping my kid off at school today, and I saw. <laughs> That's so sexy. <laughs> Isn't it yes, sexy? Exactly. Yeah. I think this is the related to the I comment. Saw. The, the <clears throat> it was just, and it, made, it just kind of made me think of things I've seen in the past. But the the cover of this week's Will Lemon Week says lights, camera, fashion. Um, Portland screen scene showcases this season's latest looks. Oh God! And I remember seeing last this year. This guy lived in L.A., so don't. I know we lived in L.A., and I, that's why yeah. I'm asking. Um, in Portland, people seem to like to talk a whole lot about the fact that Portland is up and coming in the fashion yeah. scene. Right. And having done some fashion photography, yeah, I was wondering what you thought of that. Do you think that Portland? Is doing some interesting fashion stuff. Well, you know, I I haven't seen that much, but I think it has potential to. But you know, like the cover in particular, you know, the <laughs> the, the I mean, I'm used to looking at you, you like know, that Dude, real fashion what's stuff. What's with the girl in the curtsy? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what's up with that girl or where they found her, but there are better models in Portland than that. I know because I've shot. But is, them, it, is but, it is it rainy in the background though? Kind of. Yeah, I kind of like it overall. That's cool. I mean, it's That's it's cool. cool, but uh, it's like the you know the the weed patch in Portland. But the sky doesn't look real. It looks like what, they've done something. But you know what I like about Portland, though? It's like, you know, fuck fashion. Everybody can have their own unique look. Right, And right. there's so many, like, when I first came to this town, I'm like, what are these people wearing all these goofy sunglasses? And you know what? <laughs> I own a lot of goofy sunglasses you do. now. You oh, do. Yeah. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks about me. You do. I'm not trying to, to be whatever Louis Vuitton. I, or, I am trying to take your advice that you gave me. Yes, the Carl Lagerfeld advice. Yeah, just wear the shades all, all the time. All you people out there, when I'm you get Doc to be normal. 30, Nine, just always wear glasses. That's you right. Look younger, really. That was the some of the best personal advice I've Thank had you. in years. Yeah, it works. I said I like this guy. <laughs> it works. But he no, cares I like about the, what I'm doing. I like the people that have their own freaky style here. And I mean, really, to me, the whole fashion world—it's just uh, a scam to milk people out of money for shit that's not. Oh, worth that much, oh this you know? is your business. Shh, I don't shh, care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really clients, really, clients, clients. I'm really a fine shh, artist. Shh, shh, You're hurting your you bread and butter, butter I baby. I don't, I don't care. Here we go with the. Did, did, did I question. mention I work in a cubicle all day? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wear your glasses. Glasses in the cubicle. Oh, oh God! I have an excellent after hours question from Doug right. Coleman. Excellent. Doug Coleman seems to be interested in photography and arty things. Yes. He would like to know have, if have you ever had to be anything other than an artist? Oh yeah, I uh, I my first job I put up fences on a dairy farm, and uh, it, it was this in Kentucky. This was in Kentucky, yeah. and it was hard, brutal work. At very early in the morning with yeah. post hole diggers, I worked. <laughs> I've worked at gas Post station. I've been robbed at gunpoint at a gas so station. So have I. Oh, you guys yeah. have something Dude. else in oh, common. Two of us. All right. Yeah. You and I have both been robbed at gunpoint at a gas station yeah. at one point in our lives. It's fun, isn't it? It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's kind of like one of those things like, wow, cool. You have a gun? Yeah. I don't. Did you keep your job long after that? I quit the next day. I did day. too. I- <laughs> <laughs> we're both smart exactly it's like oh I'm my god they've both gas. they've both yeah. been held at gunpoint and they're yeah. both intelligent people come in with guns and not I'm thinking it. not so much yeah not worth it so but no I've I've been a professional soon photographer soon after I lost my virginity yes which <laughs> wait, didn't happen wait, wait. at the same time that right? happened right before or right after <laughs> right, know, wait no wait right I before or right remember. after <laughs> somewhat somewhere in it's there. all a blur it's all a blur no because I could see as a teenage girl how you'd be like oh I've been holding back no, no, honey, 
baby. Died. No, I'll tell you how it. You no. almost got killed. Yeah. No, you. That's a good. Yeah, one. No, I, it's even better than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you can tell me later. <laughs> should I? Should I just? Don't you? Can, okay. Just don't use any names. Okay. Uh, uh, Mark will will appreciate this. Yes. So uh, you're you're a big uh, kind of I guess what do they call this now progressive rock art rock kind yeah, of they, the Jethro Tull Nuovo metal that's what Robert oh now calls no really it. okay yeah, that's well, what King, Rip calls well, it well King Crimson started in the late sixties yeah um, and then you did the Adrian Blue stuff but they started in the late sixties with uh, uh, um, is uh, this, Greg Lake is this was the first is this yeah. leading to losing your virginity yes, it is in a very I long think way I like sex so everybody stories. shut up and listen yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 um you know that and then uh, um um there was a uh, Emerson Lake Palmer <laughs> this yes. is going to go somewhere to losing my virginity <laughs> I want to hear I'm about gonna, the virginity I'm going to bring progressive this rock is a prog rock virginity thing. virginity thing man <laughs> And you know you had yes was an offshoot thing. I had a similar experience. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> so we're gonna talk about that. You're old, dude. Yeah. You and me both. Right. He, okay. he is. Um, it's true. He's tell. he's an old man. Uh, and and so um, when I was in high school, um, some of those bands had kind of broken up. And then they formed this quote super group called Asia. Oh my god! Do you remember <laughs> Asia? I remember them. Uh-huh. And this was like the drummer Carl Palmer from yeah, from, and and uh, and uh, the singer from John King, Wetton, right? From King Crimson. Yeah, and um and the guys from the Boogles, which was kind of weird. Right. The radio yeah. killed. Uh-huh. The, the very first video yeah. on M- MTV, they Radio Kill, scary. who had radio actually produced and briefly joined, star. yes, Is that the one we're talking She's about. Who'd, yes, <laughs> sorry, exactly. Exactly. Mark's gonna run away. Soon. But that's the song. <laughs> Sing something I like. They had bri- they had briefly um, sing meat is murder. This is this is why mm. this is why podcasting is good because I can just go yeah. on with this for ten minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the guys from the Wiggles had bri- briefly joined Yes and produced right. the Yes album and done, which was actually kind of a cool album, but mm, we won't go there. Yeah. And they formed this super group called Asia. Yes. And they had this song called Heat of the Moment. Oh my God. Yes. That was the song. Okay. That's in the car got you laid. at the planetarium. Oh my god. In the parking lot. <laughs> oh. my ass. And that's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> okay. And then I have other stories about a police concert and some other sexual okay. positions oh, that I tried out. You know, but... that person would not appreciate the police concert stories. I've heard them. Hopefully and... she doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> and if she heard them, she'd be like, you told your wife? <laughs> oh, my God. I just... Let's just say I was reading uh, a brutal. penthouse forum, you know? Yeah. And I had to kind of like, whoa, really? Oh, yeah, I had to try that. Right. So, so how did you lose your virginity, Mark? I can't remember. I'm so does old. It, does it involve uh, progressive rock at some point? Um, yeah, there was a lot of progressive rock. There was is it progressive? Is it now progressive rock or is it art rock or what no, the hell? That's kind of it's gotten a bad name, you know. Yeah. And it, it's it's because it got so overblown and bands exactly. like Asia started, which I don't consider them progressive. No, rock, no, they were like pop rock with. Yeah, but I mean, the funny thing is, is like the bands that are like um, Tool, for instance, or Nine Inch Nails, what? you know, Tool? they were all influenced mm. by yeah. progressive rock Absolutely. people, and they'll be the first ones to and tell you that. And losing their virginity. I love yeah, Nine Inch Nails, exactly. so some of it. Yeah. Although, well, you Adrian know what? Blue, you, you can, know, has played with him. You can really? only listen to yeah. it Trent for Reznor, so long. Really? Yeah, recently. Wow. 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 Right. He's... He's playing with Trent. He he did a studio thing with him several times, and his latest I don't know if it was it was the Ghost thing, and I don't know if he was on the one that came out that had vocals, but you know all yeah. the ambient Ghost tracks. Adrian's on a couple of those. So and there's some re-release of one of my. Uh, that's, this is an Adrian Blue. This goes back to uh, to David Byrne and uh, Brian Eno. Yeah, is the, they have a new album out, and and um, I thought they remastered, re-released them. Um, my life in the my bush life of ghosts. One they of did. the coolest albums and it's I've a ever really heard, good remaster. Which I have. Yeah, it's a really good remaster. I was I was in my seventy two Nova, driving around like I don't know what year it was. Yeah, and and we had a local radio station that played some really really cool cool music, um, at the time on AM yeah. radio. Right, and they played the the track Jezebel. <laughs> Oh yeah, Jezebel Spirit. Yeah, yeah, Jezebel Spirit. Okay. And I was listening All to right. it in my car on my crappy AM radio. That's right. 
<laughs> and um, there's a lot of interesting. See, the people who see, are I listening, can't do that when your wife is here. <laughs> yeah, see, see, we do an audio cast. Yes, but this is the one where you're really missing if you don't watch the video because there's a lot of action going yeah. on back here. Yeah, she didn't even hit me. Um, but I heard that radio come on the AM <laughs> AM uh, radio, and it freaked me out. Yeah, because it's a it's basically Brian Eno and Burn doing this thing, and and it's got all these. It's essentially music set to um these found recordings and things right, right? yeah and uh and this particular track is an exorcism exactly freak yeah. the hell a, out a of real me a real exorcism a real exorcism in yeah. in the uk right and it was as like as opposed to a fake exorcism that's right that's right cami chaos as opposed to a fake exorcism <laughs> double ganger <laughs> Um, but it was the coolest track, and I was like, I gotta get this out. Oh yeah, this is freaking me. I mean, it was like summer day, and I parked in a parking lot and was shaking because yeah. I heard this tune. Yeah, and it, I was, and was I wasn't some, on LSD by the way. Right, but yeah, I was no, just like some freaky stuff. Holy shit! I love it. it. it unfortunately, the new one's not anything close to as really. Good. Yeah, but uh, they're both like happy rich rock stars, and it's kind of like la di da. Yeah, isn't that what happens when you're not hungry? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like sting. Yeah, I mean it's like oh god, it's like right. well, like the Who actually. Somebody said yeah. yeah, I saw the third reunion tour of the Who. It's like right, I right. saw the first one, you yeah. know, the and who? that was the end. The Who, yeah. the Who, the Who, Who, oh, you know who the Who is? <laughs> That's right, baby. Who the Who? That's right. She just came on here because she wants to talk about sweet tits. Okay, what's the hap, Ad- sweet tits? Adjust your mic a little bit. Just, just. Turn that, turn that in a little bit. Are, are we still? I on? need to be shorter. I think like five. five exactly. Or yes. so. No, yeah. Five So this is an interesting <laughs> go, chaotic folks. show. It's totally chaotic. That's good though. It's good. That's are we, what are we, we like still on? Pod- you know, <laughs> it's a podcast. We're on. This is kind of like yeah. Jerry Lewis. This is a telethon. <laughs> okay. So we're all gonna Until like we get, get drunk money. and chain smoke, and we need more money. That's right. That's right. Yes, so this is gonna take money. you into word camp. Um, okay, that's right. We need we need to earn twenty dollars so that we it do. can play for uh, for Mark and my and, word camp attendance. Yes, and I need a cab ride early in the morning. All I don't right, so to get up that early. You guys could pay uh, you could pay Verso for my for gas because she's going to pick me up. <laughs> okay, so do that. so I just spent like the last ten minutes talking about progressive rock and virginity. Yes. Um, Does anyone else want to? So share when did you no, when, when, when did you get robbed right? at gunpoint? <laughs> Oh, I was like 19 years old, and I, okay, worked, I was 17, at a, so. worked at a gas station that yep. had like uh, I had like nine pumps, and they were all for me. I yep. had to like you know, it was all you were closing. Yeah, like I, I did. Yeah, I was getting ready, to close putting the money in the some, safe. Some guy came up behind me and stuck a gun in my back and said, "Give Damn. me all the money." And I kind of slowly started lifting the things up that hold the money. And he's like, you're, "Hurry up!" And you're not <laughs> arguing with the guy. No. You're not going, "Well, I don't think I, I should give." Then it to I you. gave like, him the money, and he he starts running off. Yeah. And I picked up the payphone behind me, started to call the cops. And my boss happened to just be driving by. Oh, and he, nice. He saw it. He tried to hit him with the car. The guy ran behind a dumpster, oh. and my boss jumped out of the car barefoot and starts chasing the guy through the woods. <laughs> So this, actually, yours your story is more like a Coen Brothers movie. It was very strange. Mine was like real, like dragnet kind of like you know. Okay. They left. Call the cops. Three sheriff show up. You yeah. know. Um, actually, one guy was like had sped there. You could tell his his prowler was like yeah really hot. You yeah. Know? Um, but yours was a little more Coen Brothers, the, the boss with the bare feet. And right, the and then the the week later after I quit, the boss's son got clubbed over the head when he was oh, on his shit. way to the safe with the money. So <laughs> it was like kind of an out of the way gas station. It was easy to rob, you know. Ooh man, yeah. that's so, and you were glad. That, you reason were number six hundred and ten that Gamma Gas never worked at a gas station. Yeah, it's not go. so cool. No, it's I mean not cool. It, it's cool. It's actually it an easy job. Seems like a glamorous job. It's a cool job. You meet a lot of people. It's all good. But until yeah. someone shows up and sticks a gun in your face, you're like, ah, oh, yeah. yeah, this job's now not cool. Yeah, exactly. I used to draw uh, caricatures of all my customers, you know, all the grody people that would come. <laughs> yeah. So oh, my God. No one's used the word grody on our show yet. <laughs> I had a guy. <laughs> I had a customer. I swear to God, the guy was a hit man. Yeah. Wow. I mean, no shit. Yeah. And he would come in and get his car checked. And the guys would run around and get his car checked. Yeah. And the one guy was like, yeah, um, there's certain places in his car you don't look. Wow. Because it was okay. like... He's got, yeah, he, you know, right. Okay. He did, yeah. yeah, and the guy kind of looked kind of Italian and kind of. He was a nice guy. Yeah, nice to the guys. It was just like, 
what do you want? It was just like yeah. sort of like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, how can we help you? Oh, <laughs> well, let me top that off. Oh, it's on me. Yeah, you exactly. Know? I swear to God, you know, it was like Yikes. witness protection program. Now, was or this something. here in Portland? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Actually, was it wasn't it Milwaukee? Well, yeah. yeah. So, okay, that's close uh, enough. Yeah. I have a question. I have a non gas station hold up virgin okay. interview related question. We're holding down yeah. the show here. And I'm, I can't believe I didn't think of it before. I feel brilliant all of a sudden. You're a photographer. I am. <laughs> you are not okay. an internet geek. No, I'm, I'm more of a freak. So, uh, as am I. Yeah. So, I want to know how you got involved in the tech scene in Portland because you are you're heavily involved in the tech scene in Portland. At I am. Point. And, you know, that's, like, that's kind of like most of my real friends are in the tech scene here. Mm-hmm. It's just because I, I was with a girl that was a geek. Mm-hmm. My ex was a geek. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I started going to these things. And at first, you know, I was like, oh, God, I don't fit in with these people. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. But then, you know, I got on Twitter and I started getting to know people. And I started learning things. And I started doing things. And uh, it became really cool. It's exciting to me that even though something might be a little bit over my head, I learned something from it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of strange because I meet people all the time that I could be a consultant for them. And I don't really know anything, but cool. they're mm-hmm. so far out of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And Gary Vaynerchuk kind of got me into the whole I was, video. I was going to bring that blogging up thing. earlier because he's kind of your... He is my guru. Your guru yeah. for... The Cram Nemlock totally. kind of thing. Yeah, his talk at Wyden Kennedy was uh, totally inspirational because I've always been kind of a nut and now I can right. have an outlet for it. I have to act like an idiot once a week. Well, that, that's what I like about what you're doing with your podcast video. And um, I mean, I, to me, that's the thing. You, you're trying to pass on really, really good information, but you've got to kind of package it and make it interesting. Why, why do yeah. I want to spend 10 minutes with you? Right, right? yeah. And and you do a great job of that. And I think isn't that kind of Gary's kind of thing? It's like you've got to yeah. kind of like pull somebody in. It's like time right. is precious. I, you have you to know? be somewhat entertaining. I mean, it's like when exactly. I noticed when he first came on at Wyden Kennedy, they showed a little clip of him from the nightly news or something, and they were a bunch of like five second clips of him acting like a nut. You know? yeah, yeah. But he really knows his stuff. But it's because he acts crazy that people watch. Exactly. Because they're entertained. Yeah, just good, you know, really seriously good information. Right. But, you know, position is always I mean that's that's always my rule for podcasting is like number one rule, be entertaining. Right. Totally. Right? Cuz people are spending their time with you. They want to Yeah. That's why you, you cut know. out all those photos. That's right. Oh, your no, wife's no. ass. No, we cut out all those photos of his wife ass. She's always gonna something have new here. so many more followers on Twitter now. <laughs> it's going to be insane. If She's only, working it. If only yeah. he brought out the real photos. Uh-oh. And not the. <laughs> well, that's well, for the after after the, hours. There was show. a reason yeah. that, like, there was a look of complete horror on my face when he came out of that room. <laughs> I was like, "Oh God, what the?" That hell room is you? kind of like the 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 Jamie Gum room, isn't it? Okay. From, from Silence of the Lambs. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if that was your dark room and you were like making some prints back there real quick yeah, or exactly. what. So do you have a? So where do you, do you? I don't do dark, a wet dark room anymore. I stole my last enlarger when I left L.A. Really. And, uh, you know, the same and larger that, you know, I got $900 for in the late 80s. Yeah. I could barely get 75 bucks for Ugh. now. Oh, so, uh, you know, it's like I don't really do wet dark room. I don't really miss it that much. But yeah. if I did, there's a few places where you can rent. But I basically scan film and uh, make oh, prints okay. digitally. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, so you actually find a good lab and you do your own film processing? Or you, I do my you, own film processing okay. in black and white. And then I do yep. my own scanning and printing digitally what kind of scanner do you use well you know i have an older scanner it's an epson scanner and it's uh they make a lot is it better a slide ones now. film scanner? yeah it's a dedicated film scanner so you know you get really good quality because i'm sure you've pretty heard, big files I've, i'm sure you've heard this before because i'm gonna be i got these thousand slides right yeah of europe and yeah. all over sure right and yeah. they're still i don't have them yeah you don't want to use a flatbed scanner especially no, for 35 millimeter sucks. it's pretty bad quality you yeah you get like a dedicated film scanner wow you know, and nikon they're expensive makes some good too ones. they're kind of expensive well the nikons are really expensive. yeah minolta makes and canon yep. makes good ones canon too. nikon yeah, minolta so, yeah. right yeah i don't really even shoot 35 millimeter film anymore and do all digital with that format yeah. Well, yeah, and and so your 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 film stuff is the medium format. It's medium so. format. It's two and a quarter square. So. Yeah. So that's a pretty nice size to. It's a big negative. You can make prints like eight yeah. by eight feet. You know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like 
Okay, so the gin bottle is. Oh, not right. Oh, my can, God. That's can, a big can, bottle. Can we have, like, um, hello? They don't play. Yeah. They it's, buy cases of those. Okay, so we're all doing real well. I make a, I make a media chick a drink. You're you're gonna have really a fine time there at Word Camp tomorrow. <laughs> you know what? I'm only drinking lime juice at this point. Okay. Well, I know you are, but uh, you know we we need to have someone come and bring hair of the dog for us in the morning. There we go. We're getting volunteers out ooh, there. Ooh, that's a really great idea because I know that the I don't drink beer and the keg, not gonna be available till the evening. So if you you know you bring me a nice, little something something in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. What? Like coffee? <laughs> Coffee's good too. Coffee's really good. Yeah, absolutely. So um so what else? So we so I, I don't drink coffee. So the Well, I know what I would like to talk about. I, I basically want to if I may. Yes. Okay. <laughs> anyway. We're like got this shit well, chaos going on over here. Shit faced over here. Yeah, exactly. No, it's the shit faced chaos. Okay. That's right. Episode of Strange Love Life. Absolutely. What can you do after Cram Namlock comes on? I mean, I know, that's right. Like in he awe. ruined it for all of it. He's really a legend. Yeah. So, so what did you want to talk about, Mark? Well, basically, uh, if you look at my fine artwork, what mm-hmm. I do is I combine different images together. And what I'd like to think that I do is I'm able to take different images and put them together in such a way where they look like one image, where you see yes. a lot of people that do manipulated photography where you can, it's pretty mm-hmm. obvious it's, you know, two or three different images. So I just wanted to point that out, and I think uh, I think you do a good job of that. So is too. this where and where I stare at something for a while and go, God, is she painted that way? Yeah, like the the cover right. or, we were talking yes. about right. on the uh, on the uh, cover. You, you managed to pull it off because there are a few images that I was like, I had to stare at. And I was like, Well, I know he said it wasn't Photoshop, but yeah, a lot of people think that it's damn. makeup or uh, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. had people uh, say, uh, "Where's the sculpture?" They think I've just photographed you know a sculpture of a mm. woman somewhere. I could see that mm-hmm. with the so. it, it was. The wood and right. the pregnancy. Yeah. Oh man, that, that one's like a, that one's amazing. Right. So that one's in the in the uh, uh, yes. fine art magazine there, and that the studio can audience. You give us a little tip on how you did that. Well, how basically, did, that was, I was staring at that they, right uh, before the show, going, "Okay, now how did he do that?" Right. Sometimes they come together really easily. I'd, I'd photographed uh, my girlfriend at the times. Um, sister-in-law who was nine months pregnant and huge and mm-hmm, i was out mm-hmm. hiking and i saw a tree that had been cut down and it was like two trees that had grown together and it was that perfect r- two like figure eight really? shape and i thought oh my god this would be perfect for the pregnant nude and i photographed it and it fit very well it's it's all about kind of trying to find a hinge point where two images fit together yeah, where they become yeah. one yeah yeah so, oh, I, i'm really bad at Figuring that out. But yeah, I've spent a lot of time yeah. doing that kind of. Uh, it's still composition, only using different pieces of. But film you you have something to in your head. together. Not always. A lot right? of times, I just experiment. I try things, okay. and I gotta try something. But else. in that case, for that photo, yeah, you took the, the photograph. I had it in my head. And you came across the the right. wood, and True. you were like in your head. Exactly. Piece the two together. Yeah, that that's kind of rare. I. I t- tend to like just go on visual adventures and try combining things yeah. and try to keep going beyond and beyond and beyond. And so I generate a lot of crap, but a lot of times, you know, the end result is good. Yeah. Now was that was that um was that kind of manually done or Yeah, that was all done with film. Wow. Yeah. So Yeah, you know, um I gotta say, you know, for people who listen to this podcast, you gotta see this photo. It's amazing. Thanks. It's it's it looks like uh, well, it looks like wood. It yeah, looks like, it looks it's like called a, a fertility pregnant goddess. woman carved out of wood. Carved out of wood. Right. I mean, it, and it's a the, photograph. The original prints are 50 inches tall, too. They're cebuchrome prints that are laminated and flush-mounted on aluminum. So they're very powerful in person. You know, they're a little bit bigger than life-size. So how do you do something that large? Well, I have a printer in L.A. that uh, okay. does the cebuchromes, but he's a great guy, and he lets me like camp out in the lab with him wow. and uh, get all up in his Kool-Aid wow. and make sure everything's perfect. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So I have an artist question for you, and... This comes from something uh, at our daughter's school. They have a parent-led art program, and they also have uh, artists and residents that come in and they teach art to the children. Right. So that they're getting a, a broader view of of the artistic world instead of just let's glue macaroni to a piece of paper. Yeah. And uh, we were trying to teach them about uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night, and I told them that there's a certain point when you stare at your painting and you're doing your painting, and you need to stop when you look at it and you think it looks great. And you might want to go a little bit further, but then you have to stop because 
if you go too far, then you've gone too far and you can't take the paint away. Right, yeah. As an artist, how do you know where that point is? Well, the nice thing about working with Photoshop is that um, you can create version after version after version. But without Photoshop, because I use Photoshop and, and that's the layers are my best friend. Well, it's still similar in that, you know, I can do a certain version and then I'll stop with that and then I might try to do something similar. Mm-hmm. So it's it's uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll create a lot of things. And when I used to work with just film, a lot of times I'd work late, late into the night. And uh, the picture I was showing you earlier with the girl that looks like she's pulling an eye out of her head. Mm, that one's it's called Bird. I, yeah, mm. I, uh, I made that late at night and I forgot about it. I didn't know when you're an artist, you get so close to your work sometimes that you can't really tell if it's good or not and mm-hmm. you're you're if you're really good at doing something you're your own worst critic so mm-hmm. you have a time in your career where you think everything you've done sucks <laughs> and yeah so you make something you think well maybe it's good and i put it away and, and didn't even and i rediscovered it like a month later and i forgot about even making it and uh it was just tremendous to me and i, I couldn't believe it so i think it's important for artists to always critique themselves really in a hard way and that's what a lot of new photographers do that don't do they they think well you know it looks pretty it's good Mm -hmm. but you have to be your own worst critic if you're ever going to get to be do something that's special and unique Mm -hmm. if you have that kind of goal so so go 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 and then look at it later commit suicide though because when you critique (laughs) yourself too hard you really do believe you suck sometimes yeah 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 i mean it gets to that point you know but i think earlier your point about you know um, at the time you're, you know, you know, the shutter is going down is trying to compose and trying to get the shot at that point. Right. right. Which is with the digital tools today with the digital cameras and, and Photoshop, yeah. you know, it's like you're kind of close. You can snap off some stuff and then you bring it in Photoshop and crop it the way sure. you see it and that sort of thing. Right. You know? You're kind of a little bit more like, you know, trying to get it done at, at that point. Right. Well, there's a lot of people that their style is really based off of, you know, highly processed. It's mm-hmm. very popular, mm-hmm. highly processed images. And that's cool. But you I, I see a lot of commercial mm-hmm. photography. Yeah. Is like that to me. You it open is, up a glossy yeah. magazine right. and you look at the glossy ads. Right. You know, uh, and quite frankly, after a while, you look at those and you're just like, you got to throw the thing away. Yeah. yeah. I never yeah. really thought about it until maybe the last couple months. But the the after image processing you take the photo then you go and crop it and change the lighting you do whatever is very much like music that i can't stomach i like music oh, yeah. that's live and visceral sure. and and beautiful and that when you're actually listening to the recording of it it's it's alive and it's something you got a little and yeah. i can't stand the music that they play for kids nowadays that's like so over processed well that, it's compressed and right. gated and yeah. so perfectly yeah technically perfect yeah yeah, yeah. and you i just don't like, like things that are technically you know, perfect yeah i don't either yeah i'd like things that are a little off and a little wrong and and they work yeah, for all the wrong get a little squeak, yeah absolutely a little squeak in there a little something right or know. a little grain in a photo you know yeah film, is that what you grain, do i mean you know? how do you throw that little human because well, because you have all the tools to do that how do you put the human open the glossy the it? two-page glossy and there's the car with the model and the guy and the and the and the and the colors are perfect Right. With, with commercial just... stuff, they don't... The reason why I got into doing fine art is because I went to a point with fashion where I realized that they don't really want me to be creative. They just, right, yeah. They just want to sell the stuff. And that's it. You well, know? it's just like commercial music or something. Yeah. It's and like, so that drove know. me... I, I got into this to be creative. And so that right. drove me to find my own style. I, took, I was a professional photographer for 10 years before I found my own creative fine yeah. art style. It took yeah. me that long. And then it took me another 10 years to come up with a body of work. Right. But, uh, you know, it, it's just, um, I do so many different things because I like to express myself creatively. I do straight black and white. I do my color manipulated stuff. I do abstract photography. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And each one's really different. Some is about being kind of precise and perfect. Like when you compile different images together, you have to be somewhat precise with that. But, you know, the uh, the black and white stuff I do, I'm shooting film, so it's has more kind of a uh, little bit of a grainy look. It's a little bit more mm-hmm. real mm-hmm. and immediate and simple because it's straight photography. And it kind of gives me an outlet away from the other kind of work so that I can refresh myself by going away and doing... like It's like Mark Unplugged. You right, know, when right, I do the right. black and white right, stuff, exactly. no studio lighting, natural light. I'm not putting images together. The final, whatever I shoot, that's it. You know, So I do both. I think it's interesting that... 
different disciplines in art have the the same sensibilities. Right. Because totally. I can always hear like a photographer like yourself yeah. talk about photography like that and talk about being unplugged in the, the film. And I can think right. about, well, I, we can sit here in the studio and, and put together something, you know, uh, a really nice recording. But we can also take the drums, the piano, and the, the upright bass and go play live somewhere. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah. And and you're and, and you're really gonna walk in, in and get moment. that experience. Yeah. And it's not gonna sound like anything you're gonna hear on a recording. Right. You're gonna be sitting in a certain location. You're gonna hear what those actual acoustic instruments sound like at exactly. that Exactly. Yeah. And they and it's all very valid, right? You know, it's like you know, there's 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 the production of audio. Right. Like Brian Eno. Yeah. Years ago. Sure. Talked about how Production of audio, production of records, production of recording is a certain discipline. Sure. But it's different from the discipline of, you know, having a, a, a violin or having a piano or something sitting right in front of you and being right. performed. Yeah, and that's what's interesting about, you know, Fripp and Eno together because, you know, Fripp is, uh, he practices so much still at, you know, yeah. 60 years old. He puts in three hours a day at his guitar. Yep. But, you know, and then you have Eno who... You know, does a lot of the post-processing, manipulated, exactly. strange stuff, and you put those two guys together who share a lot of same ideas, and they come up with some really amazing work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, and then and then there's all the schlock, right? There's yeah, all the exactly. there's all the glossies yeah. in those magazines that you're looking at the photography and you're going, it's, okay, I'm fatigued now. I yeah. can't look at it's, that. It's hollow, and I feel like a or lot the of stuff times you they, listen to, you know, they seem desperate a lot of times, to, desperate to try to do something trendy and different, but oh, it's, it's just, just it's hollow. It's a lot of times. It's so perfect, right? It's terrible. Yeah, it's well, so perfect. It's easier that it's not empty, to right? listen to it when you hear it. It's easy to just like, oh God, and take the headphones off or skip the station. But when you see it, it's burned. You've seen it. You've looked at it. It's there. You know, music, it plays out for a long time, and that's the interesting thing about a visual, is once you see it, it's ingrained. Yeah. That's right. True. You have a chance Speaking to, of music, this is playing out. <laughs> you have a chance to turn that music off, people. That's right. <laughs> but once you've seen the image, you're screwed. That's right. Some real live music. Forever. Mark, it's, for been, life. it's been lovely having you on After Hours. Thanks for having me. It was fun. If you see Cram... Tell him thank you for stopping by. I will. That's right. <laughs> um, it's been a real treat thank to have you, Dr. you Normal. on this show. It was a blast. That's right. I love the it. cram guy. I don't. I don't I'm not so. No, no, he's he's a crazy. Scary. Yeah, but uh, but thank you for coming. The chicks dig him though. That's right. Yeah, the yeah. chicks. And that's love what the, it's all about. They that's love right. the bad boys. Yeah, they love the bad boys. I wonder if he got robbed. I don't know. I think he's probably doing the robbing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. Thank you all for joining us. And if you're going to word camp tomorrow, go to sleep for goodness sake. I think it's everyone an is for man. me. That's right. Mm, a nice little mocha. So yeah. good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.